This marketing gimmick has gone too far. Solark wants you to think their inverters with 200 amp pass-through will power your whole house off-grid without you changing a thing. And that sounds great until the grid goes down, because that 200 amps, it's only there when the grid is up. Off-grid, a Solark 15K delivers just 12 kilowatts, which is about 50 amps. Nowhere near the 200 amps that your service panel is capable of. Try pulling typical house loads during a blackout. In many homes, you could overload the system instantly. So let's break down the math and I'll show you what actually works. The Radio Life, into the country. Hey, I'm Nick and welcome to The Ready Life. We've lived off-grid for 25 years and helped thousands of folks gain independence from the systems that control their water, food, heat, and power. And today, I'm going to set the record straight and say the thing that almost no one will tell you about this 200 amp pass-through marketing hype with inverters like the Solark 15K and others like EG4's 18K. Solark's 15K inverter does indeed have a 200 amp pass-through, and that means when the grid is on, the inverter can pass up to 200 amps of current to the home. Sounds awesome, right? But here's the catch. That number only applies when the system isn't doing any real work. When the grid goes down and the inverter is responsible for powering your home, the game changes completely. Let's run the numbers. The Solark 15K is actually rated to supply 12 kilowatts continuously when operating off the grid. That's 50 amps at 240 volts, which is all that it can reliably provide. So if your 200 amp breaker panel is full of loads, what happens when you pull 150 or even 100 amps? When you lose the grid, that inverter is gonna overload and shut down fast. Some people may say, well, no one really uses all 200 amps at once, and that's true but plenty of homes get well beyond 50 amps during peak hours. So let me give you a typical scenario. Let's say it's 6.30 in the evening, dinner's being made on the electric range, and maybe the oven's on too. The lights are on, the kids are watching TV, someone's got the dryer running, the water heater kicks on, which it could kick on at any point in time, and maybe the HVAC system turns on, and you've got the refrigerator that runs every now and then. And this is just a sampling of things. There could be a bunch more, but all of those together could be easily 15 to 20 kilowatts of load, way beyond what that inverter can supply. So let's say the grid drops. What happens then? Well, your inverter instantly transfers over to battery power and tries to keep up. It exceeds its 12 kilowatt continuous rating and then it shuts down to protect itself. Now you're in the dark with a super expensive inverter that's basically acting like a giant breaker. Even if the inverter could somehow handle it, your battery bank probably couldn't. Drawing that much power off-grid without massive batteries means you'd drain your system in hours. And that's where the real surprise hits folks who bought into this hype. They thought that they were buying a grid-tied battery backup system that could power their whole house. But they didn't plan for load management, the reality of big appliances surging when they turn on, and battery limitations. And to solve that, they're told that they need to add a load-shedding device. Load shedding prioritizes your big appliances and turns off anything that's overloading your inverter, but that only solves the immediate overloading of the inverter. It also means that any of your big loads could be shut down without warning, and you're still consuming a massive amount of power and discharging your batteries crazy fast. If you haven't planned for that, you'll have another blackout pretty soon. This is why I highly recommend installing a critical load subpanel especially in homes that weren't designed from the ground up for efficiency. A critical load subpanel lets you intentionally isolate what actually matters during a blackout, such as your fridge and freezer, lights, internet, a well pump, maybe a mini split, things like that. Not the entire electric range, 60 gallon electric water heater, and dryer, and HVAC system, and all that. So again, Solark makes a solid inverter, but the expectations created by this 200 amp pass-through marketing are where things fall apart. That spec is technically true, but the application is misleading for anyone planning on going off the grid. And this leads me to why I made a different choice in my own home. Since I'm completely off the grid, I have to have a system that is totally functional and reliable. There is no grid here. And that's the kind of reliability that you want with your hybrid system when you lose your grid power. It needs to just plain work when the grid disappears. 
That's why I chose the Midnight Power All-in-One Inverter. Unlike most brands, Midnight didn't chase marketing numbers. Their system has a much more realistic 100 amp pass-through, not because it's weak, but because they wanted to be honest about how much loads their 10 kilowatt inverter can realistically handle off the grid. What really sold me, though, are the features that make it a perfect fit for off-grid operation during blackouts or even for full-time off-gridders like us. First, the smart load system. Midnight has included multiple smart load breakers here, and these enable you to automatically control large loads and automatically turn them off when the batteries get discharged to a certain point, things like that. And it's a really, really useful feature that's built right into the inverter. There's three of them where many of them have only one. So, you know, say your electric water heater or something like that, you can have it turn off when the batteries get down to a certain threshold. And you don't have to buy an extra box to make that happen. It's just built in. Second is the surge capacity. Midnight's inverter has a huge 200% surge ability. It's been known to start a five horsepower motor with just one inverter. Many systems would need to stack two inverters just to think about doing that. This is huge when you're dealing with large startup loads like deep well pumps or compressors. And it's amazing at handling imbalanced leg loads when you have large 120 volt appliances running on the same leg. And when you go with the Midnight PowerFlow batteries like I did, it forms a UL-listed energy storage system that makes it easier to pass restrictive codes. And it all works together so seamlessly and is super easy to install. This isn't a sponsored video. I bought my own equipment. And if you want to go with a Solark, that's great. I think they're pretty good machines. I'm just sharing what I'm using and trying to help keep you out of trouble during a blackout. So if you want a system that's built for real-world blackouts, not just grid pass-through marketing, check out the links in the description for the Midnight Power Inverter and batteries that I use, as well as some other options. But whatever you choose, please do yourself a favor and install a critical load sub-panel, unless you're prepared to build a huge system that's capable of truly powering your home off-grid. Because off-grid is what you'll be during an extended blackout. And if you want to learn more about our power system, check out these videos where you'll see why we chose what we did and how it works.